Hi, welcome back. Uh, what we are going to do is we are going to take a look at our Circle Song Quilts Spinning Wheel 36. And this will be the second video that I've done with this in the last few days. The reason that I wanted to do this video is because I wanted to show you not just how beautiful that the single motif looks, which we did earlier, but I want to show you how we can dress it up. And we could take it from just a single motif to extraordinary with just a few things. So what we're going to do now is we're going to kind of take that one step up. I'm going to do another video on taking it up another step from that. So this is just kind of a progression that I'm looking at doing for you. So if you recall our Circles on Quilts Spinning Wheel 36, and this is a five and a half inch um, template. Now what the five and a half inches means is that from tip to tip of the motif is five and a half inches. From center to tip is two and three quarters. Okay, so when you're coming out from the center, it's going to come out two and three quarters. When it's totally done, it's going to be five and a half inches. I'm also going to incorporate, incorporate our four inch arc on today's um, adventure. <laughs> so let me um, first go ahead and get my tack in. And remember, I do put my tack in from the top to start with. And we're going to make sure that we've got our tack securely in through the wrong side of our fabric. And there we go. Let me show you where we come up. You can see it, hopefully, right here. I'm going to try something here. Yeah, that doesn't help, does it? Okay. The tack is right here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come out. I'm going to take the tack out, but I'm going to keep the back side of my fabric up. And I'm going to stick that tack straight down, flip it over, and you're going to notice it comes up exactly in the center. And that is exactly where we want it. Awesome. Our template is going to go on that tack. Then I want to show you again, we're going to line up this center line and this center line right along the eight point crosshair lines that we put in there. So we're going to make eight rotations. A rotation. And now I need to get you closer. Okay, hang on here. And we're going to go like this. There we go. A rotation consists of putting your foot at the starting point A, stitching around and ending at B. I'm going to do it in this orientation because I want you to be able to see what it's going to look like for you. Okay. Again, I'm going to go ahead and put my foot down at the A. I'm going to hand wheel my needle down and back up. I don't have a, an automatic machine with buttons and things like that. I'm working on a vintage sewing machine, which happens to be one of my favorite machines to work on. It is a Singer 301. And there we're going to go. First got introduced to them by my husband. His first Singer 301, he was so impressed with, he asked me to try it. I said, well, sure, I'd be happy to try it. He's still waiting to get it back. I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> I fell in love with the machine, so I'm, I'm going to hang on to it. He subsequently has bought another one anyway. I'm going to go ahead and take one stitch here in place. And then I'm going to start stitching. And as I stitch, I'm going to start out kind of slow, get my rhythm going, and when I get to the top, I'm going to stop making sure my needle is in the down position. The reason that I am doing that is because even though our template has a rounded top to it, 
it's simply rounded to accommodate the foot. What will happen is we're going to end up with a very sharp point on the outside edge of our motif. So we want to take one extra stitch when we get to the top. I'm going to kind of shorten up some of these threads here too and get those out of the way. Okay, there we go. So now that I've put my foot or my needle down at the top, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just again take one stitch in place and now I'm going to start going down. I like to say that I drive my templates basically the same way I drive my car. Um, I'm, I'm a little slow, I'm not going to lie about that. But I like to start at a really nice gentle pace and then I'm going to work up to a pace that's comfortable. Some templates no, don't ever, I don't think I ever get going really fast on. See how I took that extra step up on top there. You want to remember to move your hands in sync with your needle. In other words, if you have your needle going a consistent speed, you don't want to speed up and slow down your hands. You want to make sure that they stay consistent as well. If, however, you start speeding up your needle, then of course you're going to want to speed up your hands a little bit. And if you slow it down a little bit, you're going to want to slow your hands down along with it. I am not a fast stitcher. I've never been a fast stitcher. Some people like to do it that way, and if you're one of those people, that's okay. I don't have a problem with that. I'm not the quilt police. <laughs> I'm not sure there are any real quilt police. Although I've been to a couple of quilt shows, I guess maybe I would wonder along those lines. <laughs> okay, again, there's my stitch or two right at the top, and you'll see how pointy that top is. I'm going to get back down here. I want to bring you in just a little bit and show you what a beautiful point we get when we take that extra stitch right there. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. Okay, we'll back you back out here a little bit. Want to make sure you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Now, today I am literally turning my block as I stitch. In the first video I did, I did not do that. I, I did it part way and then the rest of the way I just moved the template. I mentioned it then and I will say it again. It's a really great idea to be able to stitch the template in any orientation. Now what I mean by that is we move the template not the fabric. So here I've been using this template in this orientation halfway. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist the template and keep my block in the same orientation. So what I'm learning here is I'm learning to stitch this shape out from a different angle or orientation and why that is important is because if we have a larger quilt under our needle, we're not going to be able to, to physically turn that quilt around with every orientation. It would be just too difficult. But if we can turn our template around with every orientation, with with every uh, rotation will be fine. Okay, there we go. Just kind of got offline there for a second. Okay, so I'm going to come up here, 
take that extra stitch, come back down, line up with my B, make sure that my needle is down. I am going to now take my key out, okay? And by doing that, I'm able to take my template off. And there is a reason that I'm doing that. I'm going to turn this around so you can see it. What you're going to see here is the beginning threads right here. What I want to do is I want to make those threads disappear. And so I'm going to make just an overhand knot in it. I'm going to cinch it down on my needle about an eighth to a quarter of an inch off of the top of the fabric. You don't want the knot to be flush on the top of your fabric or it will not go into the batting, which is where we're going to bury this. So I'm going to get my hand underneath. The reason I do that is because I don't want to accidentally come through the other side of the block. I want to make sure I'm in the batting, not on the out of the outside of the back. Okay, there we go. So now that I've gotten that far, I'm going to go ahead and just take these tails out right here. I'm just going to go ahead and pull those out. <laughs> I'm going to try and pull those out. Okay, there we go. I'm getting them. And there they go. And there goes, I didn't mean to do that, but that's how easy it is to bury your knot. My knot pulled through. So now I'm just going to take a scissors and I'm going to trim off the extra. And that goes in the trash. And now I'm going to go ahead and put my template back on. And where's my key? I need my key. And there it is. So remember, this is where we stopped. We started at A, went up to the point, back down to B. We're now going to twist our template so that we are again, our foot is in front of the A, this line and this line. These two center lines are lined up on our crosshair. And this is going to be our last rotation. So what we have is we have eight rotations and down we're going to go. The beautiful thing about this is when you come back around you're going to stop at B which is exactly where A was when we started. Okay so I'm going to lift my needle and my thread take my template off. Whoops. Mm, just can't get it. There we go. That tape wants to stick on there. And I am going to put my key back in at this point for two reasons. One, I don't want to lose it. And secondly, we're done with that template for right now. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and pull my upper thread, drop my foot, and now I want to draw my bobbin thread up. And there it is. So I'm going to pull it along with my top thread until I get a nice longish, whoops, longish tail to bury. Okay, so there it goes. Now I've got just my top, my my top and bobbin thread. And there's my needle. I use a self-threading needle. Uh, there's a couple different kinds out in the market. Uh, mine actually just pokes right through the top. The thread pokes through the top just like this and it is easy. So I am going to now come in and I'm going to join those bottom stitches, pull it through the batting. My knot already went in and there we go. We've got a perfect join. No one will ever know that's where it was joined. Okay, so that's step one. 
Let's take a look now at step two. I've taken my tack out. Now what I want to do is I want to echo these lines. And in order to do that, I want to actually draw out 16 crosshairs. I've got eight drawn out already, so I'm going to put an extra eight in. And that's not difficult to do. I'm going to grab my eight inch or my eight point crosshair ruler. I'm going to turn my crosshair ruler until I get to these white lines, which are absolutely in the center of the lines we've already drawn. And then what I want to do is I just want to take and make some lines coming between my motifs where the motif crosses over itself. So I'm going to make eight lines there. Okay, whoops, got myself back, get myself back to lined up here. I moved things a little bit. You can see this does not take long. And the reason that I'm doing this is because I'm going to make some echoes. And when I make those echoes, I want a spot delineated here where I know I need to change directions. Now, there's two ways of doing that. One is to put, obviously, to put the lines like I did. The other one is to use your foot. So what I'm going to do is I want a quarter inch echo from the center of my foot to the outside edge of my foot is a quarter of an inch. My needle sits exactly in the center of the foot. I want to bring that down just a little bit. And we're going to move you forward. And forward again. There we go. Perfect. So where I'm going to start, I am not going to start on one of the valleys or the peaks. That's what I call these valleys, peaks. I'm going to start halfway in between. The reason being is if we get off on a valley or a peak, it may be somewhat difficult to get back to it. If we start in the middle of one of those areas, halfway between, if we're just a little off, we can fudge that line and make it work. So I'm going to go ahead and put my foot down. Remember, we always put our foot down first. And then I'm going to put my needle down. Now what I am doing is I'm holding my 12 inch arc and I'm holding it so that the edge of the template stays right on this line of stitching. Where am I going? I am coming towards myself and I will stop when my needle hits this line. So I'm going to take one stitch and off we're going to go. There I'm at that line. Okay. So now I'm going to rotate my block and I'm going to come here and you'll see actually I need about a half a stitch yet. There we go. Perfect. Now I'm going to take that one stitch at the top to make sure it's nice and pointy, just like we did on the rotations of our template. Make sure my needle is down there. Now this is another way you can know where, when to stop. When the side of your foot hits this line of stitching, you will want to stop. So again, I'm lining my ruler up right on the stitching line there and I will stop when my needle hits that line. And one more. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, you see what's starting to happen here? Let's get a few more in and then I'm going to show you because this is just the coolest thing. And again, for some reason, I want to make that just a quarter of a stitch shorter than it should be. Okay, so now 
again making that one stitch up on top you're going to want to make one stitch in the valley too because that also is going to be a sharp turn line up one more time up to the line we're going to go ahead and turn on the line stitch to the white mark okay there we go now we're going to twist and up we're going to go to the line and we're going to just repeat this all the way around and this is what we have when we do this echo it's just a simple echo that adds a very nice touch to it it will add a half an inch to your motif so rather than being five and a half from here to here you're now going to be six inches from here to here reason being is we've added a quarter of an inch on each side so you have five and a half inches plus a quarter inch is six inches plus a quarter five and a half inches <laughs> plus a quarter is five and three quarters inches plus a quarter is six inches so that's where we're going to end up I'm going to stop the, t the recording here and I'll come back and show you the finished product. Okay, we're back. There we go. We are back. Our embellishment is finished. It looks really nice. It's just a way to dress up that 36 spinning wheel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to post this part of the video. And then I will come back with another video and we're going to turn this up a couple more notches. So watch for that. And until I see you again, let's quilt.